There's the beautiful new tree that Tom gave me and it took me an hour to dig some holes and go over to his place and get it and the next day I get an email saying his wife is taking it back. So I'm not getting the pinky winky. Japanese lilac, pinky winky. Good morning guys. Do I look tired? Yeah. It's 620. Truck's warming up. I don't know if it's going to be a cold rainy day or a sunny one. No idea. It's too early. But we're going on an adventure. So Doug called me last night. We discussed a few things. Places we could go. Things we could do. We ended up deciding we are going to look uh, at metal detecting. And he knows an old park from the 20s or 30s that is forgotten to history. So... Of course, like I said, Doug's a good guy to know. We're going to go check that one out first. And if that's a no-go, I mean, the grass and weeds might be up to our waist. Who knows? We'll find something, but we're going detecting. Either way, with Doug, let's do this. Uh, feels windy and rainy. I wouldn't know that, though, because I don't have internet. Today is day six with no internet at my place. Just pulled into the gas station to get gas and there's a sign over the pump saying due to network issues we cannot accept cards cash only. Way to go Kojiko. Kojiko plays a game. They tell each one of us on this road, four of us that called, oh we need to send a technician to your house. Are you kidding me? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if four different people from four different locations in the same area are calling in, it's not our houses. But it's a game that they play, right? They know something major is wrong, and it just got worse and worse, up to until the point of six days ago where the internet is completely out. And let me just tell you guys a few of the things. The Alexa doesn't work, okay? It's surprising how many things you ask Alexa in a day. <laughs> light bulbs, we have probably half a dozen, maybe more, of these fancy LED light bulbs. The kids put them in their rooms. Um, my wife has surprisingly put them throughout the house in places I didn't know. You can change these things to any color you want. You can dim them, which is really nice. Uh, you can do a bunch of stuff with them. And if they're not connected to the internet, apparently they flash. <laughs> That's so stupid. Uh, my vacuum, my vacuum, the iRobot doesn't work without the internet. It gets lost if it can't connect to the database and see the maps that it's created for your house. The vacuum doesn't work. So anyway, just a ton of little things that, you know, 10 years ago would never be an issue. And the, the internet, guys, that's a given. I can't check any of my work stuff, my social media stuff. I can't upload videos for you guys. And as a consumer, oh, I am so frustrated with these guys calling and calling and calling. Um, and all they tell you is they're working on it. And we have no option on this road that we live on because we're right on the edge of town. I can't switch. Kojiko is the only company with high speed internet here. And I've actually been looking into Starlink and thinking about spending $200 for the equipment and double what I pay for internet now just to get something that might be, uh, probably is more reliable. But uh, I'm not at that point yet guys, but I've had it with Kojiko. There's no recourse. I'm fuming. Doug says he's got a couple of old oil lamps that he'll lend me if uh, things keep going the way they're going. Yep, it's raining. I wonder if Kojiko offered to send a technician to the gas station. Hmm, just killing 10 minutes here guys before I get to Doug's. I'm way early. And it's starting to rain harder and harder. I don't know if we're going to have to change this plan. That's the easy thing with Doug, though, guys. He is such a historian. Last night, just talking to him, I mentioned one of the other places that I have permission for. And he knows all the people out here. So we know this same person. And he said, oh, yeah. Uh, he said, did you know there was an old building on the edge of the property that one of the caretakers lived on? And oh, by the way, he killed his wife and buried her along the trail somewhere out there. And I'm like, uh, no, I didn't know that. I mean, these are 
cool places, guys. Not only could we go detect, but we could do some kind of paranormal investigation. I mean, there was a murder there. And Doug knows all this stuff, so... I love you like that. Yeah, for copyright reasons, I've had to cut the music out, but that's what I'm listening to. All right, I can't kill any more time. Doug, sorry, I'm going to be early. Let's get this show on the road. Well, you're prompt. That's, that's a good thing. <laughs> Doug was just showing me he bought an F-Pulse, and I said, good choice. Can't go wrong with that. So as I told you guys, Doug says we're going to throw a magnet in at the bridge down where we're going, which we're not telling you where we're going, but then Doug goes on to tell me, well, there, yeah, there was a couple uh, groundings in the creek there over the years, too. And, uh, he knows his history. He knows everybody that's <laughs> been murdered or <laughs> died in some way out here. Dude, right. we should do some paranormal at these places. You can try it. <laughs> Okay, so Doug just showed me a place here that um, I've been just down the road many times. I had no idea this was here. There's a little road that comes in. There was a scout camp here. There was a pump house here. There's a little creek over to our right with an old bridge. And uh, this is where we're going to throw the magnets in off the bridge. I'm trying not to show where we are, which is why I'm keeping it concealed. But there's quite a bit of ground here that we can detect. This goes back to when, Doug? 20s? 30s for sure, maybe before. Just naturally goes over. Doug's saying there's a, a natural dam under here. It's not, as, uh, it's not as deep as it used to be. Is there trout in there? Yes. It used to be a really, really good trout creek, but then they straightened it years ago for the water work, say. Eh? Oh, uh, okay. The town water used to come out of the creek. And with as many dairy farms that were still <laughs> along the creek. At yeah, that time too, the yeah. trout probably didn't like that too much. No, no, it, uh, it really affected the uh, population. Eh? Better not hit any fish with that one, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> By being up on that side, we're a little bit more secluded. Yeah. So Doug was telling me that also there's a, an opening up there uh, that with the trail system that goes up a hill and people have been hiking that since the 20s or 30s um, John is detected up there got a couple silver coins, but right in the area where The trail starts the kids used to come parking and it's mowed right now the field So I said to Doug hey might be worth you know swinging a detector over there. You might find an old coin or two so eh. So I'm just showing Doug his machine. We uh, we took the F pulse and we adjusted the frequency on it so it doesn't interfere as much with the Garrett AT Pro. So we're finding lots of junk here, uh, aluminum stuff, paint can lid, which I just hit 10 inches down there. But uh, I didn't realize Doug wasn't as familiar with the machine as I thought. He, he didn't know what the pinpoint was, so we're now teaching him how to become a master with the pinpointer. <laughs> so he's finding stuff and then I'm digging it. All right, we've moved up the road a little bit and Doug was saying he's pretty sure this is where the Boy Scout uh, building was. What era was that, Doug? Hey? The Boy Scouts were here in what, 50s, 60s? 50s and 60s. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna just, I mean, the grass is pretty high, but we're gonna try swinging here. And across the road is another field. And Doug said, well, there was never a building there. But I said, no, that's where the Boy Scouts had their fires, tied their knots, learned all their routines. We're going to have to come back in the spring because it's waist high grass over there, but I'll try right in here for now and see if we can find anything. Pretty hard swinging in here, guys, but uh, I found a couple old nails, chunks of iron, nothing worth mentioning, really. So I can hear Doug's machine squawking over there. It sounds like iron. Um, really difficult to dig in these conditions. It's the wrong time of year. But up above, there is that parking lot where the kids used to go parking park their vehicles to walk up the mountain if you know what I mean so maybe we'll go up there and take a look because that goes back to the 30s 40s so might be a coin up there let's go take a look
just making our way up to that parking area and Doug says hey look over there and I was thinking maybe an old light pole or something but he says flag post I think he's right maybe maybe to do with the scouts I don't know coming into the scout camp they might have had a flag here all right look at that Doug found his first treasure <laughs> an earring a gold is that an old one oh two two different earrings man that's a red one right there, and there's a green one. Yeah, so two different pieces here. A red one and a green one. Well, there's some more stuff. These are all Doug finds, because you guys know that I don't find crap, I find treasure. Here's one sticking right out of the ground, we tripped on it. I don't know what that is, but pry it out of there. And voila! <laughs> hey Doug, I thought you needed a better shovel. <laughs> yeah, Alright, first coin, not an old E73, but it is a coin. Doug told me to leave the detector in the truck. I don't know, He's. it looks like a romantic uh, lookout here, Doug. We're above the town now some trails up here he's given me history lessons and you guys oh, I can't even tell you the stories I'm forbidden to tell he knows so much stuff this guy you know it's funny Doug that 30 years I've been coming out here my wife's from here I've never been up here Doug was just showing me carved into the stone here, relatives of his. M. M. Cox, you said, in here? And the Williams. The Williams above it there. And he died in the 40s. Yeah. Across when I was a kid here. And it's all collapsed now. Oh, there's a cave. Yeah. Not much of one, but. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that was there. And there, there's the big town of Powassan down there. Just detecting Doug's yard, he went in to get some coins he said he wanted to show us on the video and uh, I thought I had a little ring there, but no, it's, it's just a nut. <laughs> so we're just taking a few minutes to swing Doug's yard here because the farmhouse was from 1929 and he's got a ton of cleared land right here, so you never know. We're finding a lot of tin foil, like the old pie plate uh, Containers, stuff like that. Nothing of interest yet, but you never know. Old farmhouse. Well, it's not tinfoil. That's a pull tab. So we're just down there digging where the garden was and tinfoil after tinfoil after tinfoil. Doug is going to have the cleanest yard in all of Poisson, but it doesn't make for a great detecting video, so we won't bother showing you guys any of that. Let's jump in and uh, show you guys some of the coins that Doug said he was going to bring out for us. Oh, you got a whole collection here. I just went through mine the other day. I had some twos that I forgot that I had. Yeah, that's the one I was telling you about. Oh, that's... Yeah, dude, that's... Uh, 1787 that's Spanish isn't no, it I don't know that for sure well maybe not because mm -hmm. there was a book an old coin book I had and it was in it but similar but a little different it says Hispan right there man Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does that mean Hispanic? I don't know. I I can't see that being English. No, it's well. If we look up who Carlos the Third was, we'll know. I'm pretty sure that's dude. That's Spanish or Mexican or. Now see, we should have faked this, Doug. You should have brought these coins out before we detected your front yard. <laughs> That's what some of these channels are doing. Oh, look what I found. 
Got all kinds of goodies in there. I've seen that double-headed guy before. Confederation, I knew I'd seen that before. I found one of those. I actually detected one of those, Doug. Oh, yeah? Yes, I did at the ski hill. 1826, that's an oldie. Georgius the Fourth. Yeah, that's British for sure. Seated Liberty, is that what they call that? She's sitting down on the job anyway. She must work for the city, Doug. <laughs> that one, this one's uh, a Queen Victoria, but it's pretty war. 18, 1898. Okay, yeah. Yeah, a Vicky. Yeah, one shilling, 1884. That's what that says. Victoria was not a pretty lady. There's a 50 cent, guys. 1917. I was just telling Doug, I have never found a 50 cent piece yet. And then I asked Doug, did you look up any of the values of any of these? He says, nope, but I don't really care. <laughs> Five. That's the old school, yeah. Seventy-five. That one. That one's kind of neat with the one fifty, eh? I don't even remember that color. What year that's is that? Be fifty-four, nineteen fifty-four. I've never seen one of those, Doug. Yeah. No, that's before our time. And here's one really before our time, nineteen twenty-three, Dominion of Canada. <laughs> then Doug pulls out his quarter book and he says, "Oh, eighteen eighty-eight." The thing looks mint. It's still got shine on it. That's got to be worth something, Doug. Only worth I'm sure something to a collector, right? Yeah, well, I'm sure a lot of them in here are worth <laughs> something. We found a jar with some stamps in it, and Doug says, I'm not a stamp guy. I'm not either, but it looks like there's a note in there. Maybe it says you're a millionaire, Doug. Oh, I doubt that. Or is it a note? It's an envelope. Well, I guess it's tissue paper or something. And there's not even a note. Ugh, I don't know man. what that is. Means you're going to actually have to do some research and Why see. Why it was saved, I don't know. I don't know who that guy is. Looks like a military stamp. He's got some kind of military uh, yeah. medallion or something on him. All right, Doug's got to head out, but I want to thank him for showing us his collection. It's actually better than mine, so <laughs> he's just like, I got a bit of a collection. No, Doug, you have a good collection. So anyway, he might be able to find something out in the yard. Uh, we're going to, we, eventually we'll get out again, whether we do around here. He's got the other property too, which is more colonial era, mm -hmm. which I'm bugging Doug to do that one. But uh, we'll see. There's some old, I guess they were 1920s homesteads there yeah. and whatever logging came before, so... We will definitely be getting out again, so sooner rather than later, Doug and I will be on the trail. We'll talk to you guys in the next adventure.